our replay viewers. There we go. Hey, love. I'm back in the Merrimack River. Hey, Angie. My sailboat's in a crazy current, and it's almost low tide. And I'm on a on a this camera. So you can see, I can see there's this. Hi, love. Hi, Angie. This camera's on a mount. You can see the the wire, the post for it, off to the side. My boat is on a mooring ball, just like those ones behind me. And normally I would just be pointing in one direction. But look at how I'm, I'm going. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, I'm just sitting here. Look at, look at this boat going back and forth and all around. It's, it's insane. You know, first it goes left, then it goes right. And I have to sleep tonight. It's like I'm, I'm traveling at, at two or three miles an hour for free. Back and forth, zigzagging. It's really funny in a certain sense, but, but I'm not too happy about it. So what happened is, is I was at the dock, the boat was at the dock, and I went to work, and I was supposed to come back Friday night, but here I am, back, back on Tuesday afternoon. So they weren't expecting me, and so my boat got put out here. They needed the space. Just look at, look, I'm not doing anything to this boat. I'm just, just sitting here. And it's going every which way. It's kind of a pretty view. We just had a helicopter spraying for mosquitoes, but it's it's buzzed off. It'll probably be back. So you can see it's, this is kind of a pretty view of the marsh. It's getting to be low tide. We just had a had a new moon, so the tides are super super strong. And and you've never seen this view before. Look at look at how I'm spinning back and forth. Here comes a you know th this boat should be stationary. And, and it's not, so I'm going to have to sleep tonight somehow. And I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. But in the meantime, you guys get to see the pretty view. This is the, uh, the Merrimack River. It's very warm here today. So my story at work was, the past few weeks I've been, been helping out in the kitchen. And yesterday was the first day of the mechanical dish machine which completely overwhelmed me so so I had enough of that and, and gave up. I had I have things to do here on, on the mainland so so I'll see Star Island in a little while in a The good news is I have a job out there for July and and the job was promised to somebody else who was a little surprised to hear from me the other day that I was gonna be doing some of the job and so we worked it out. Yeah I'm talking about being a dishwasher. Except I'm not, I wasn't washing dishes. I was washing things from the kitchen, let's put it that way. The people where, that were eating where I was working, they were responsible for after a meal, they washed their own dish. But then the dish machine came online and they didn't wash their own dish, they just stacked it up. So it, it became way too much work. And I said, who wants to be a dishwasher? I'd rather, you know, in a certain sense, it's easier to do it by hand. Wow, I don't think I've ever had <laughs> I don't think I've ever had 17 viewers. The, I'm on my sailboat. You can see I have this thing on a mount. And the current is running out the river in a crazy fashion. So so this image, you know, this this is a fixed camera. This is my boat going back and forth like a like a snake or something. And I'm kind of wondering, this is gonna slack off, but I still have to sleep at night. And, and in about 10 or 9 or 10 hours, hey Blue Noser, I love that name. Blue Noser, are you from, from Eastern Canada? Or is that a different kind of Blue Noser? So in 9 or 10 hours, this current's going to be roaring out again, doing the same thing. And, and I wonder if I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night. Yes, you're from Eastern Canada. From Nova Scotia, are you? And if you're from Nova Scotia, then what part are you from? I love it up that way. So, so where was I? Yeah, we're having a little bit of a, a sunsets coming in. So this this is just a crazy current. I've never been on this more Coal Harbor. I don't know if I've heard of Coal Harbor. Where where is Coal Harbor? In relation to like Halifax. I have a feeling you might be be east of Halifax. See so you're testing my geography, knowledge of geography. So here, I, so the people that are just joining, here I am on my boat, just east. See, I, I am a good guesser, Blue Noser. The tide's racing out, the current's racing out. Here comes a guy in a, in a rubber boat. And, and his motor's not running very fast, but the current's got him. So he's whizzing along at pretty good speed. 
I think he's probably going in for dinner. It's about that time of the day. It's been a super nice day. The, uh, most of the rain squalls have missed us. But look, look at how I'm swinging. This is, this is different. I've never been on this, this mooring before, <laughs> and I don't think I'd want to be on here for too long. And you can see the... What am I fishing for tonight? I am not fishing. I'm on a sailboat. I'm just, just sort of killing time. I, I got a ride out here maybe half an hour ago, and I'm going to sleep here tonight. This is, this is my little spot for the night. And in the morning, someone's going to come out, and that boat you're looking at, they have to get something off of that, so they'll come out to that, and come out to me, and bring me in. And I couldn't go anywhere because my car's in the garage, getting fixed. So I was kind of stranded. They, they, locked, me in the, uh, they locked me in the office, but I knew I was okay, because these people that, that own this place work crazy hours, so I knew eventually I'd get, <laughs> I'd get out here. But I didn't get out here until about 6.30, and they closed at 5, so I was just like killing time. So look, look, I'm kind of like sideways to the current now. Then there's going to be a big swing. Whoa! Would you like to try to... Whoever's watching, would you like to try to sleep in this? No, this is not an Airbnb horror story. Yeah, that's funny. You could make that into a song. Or maybe that already is a song. All right, here comes a little motorboat behind me. Or in front of me. On the other side. Let him go by. They're going to put out two lobster pots. And you might see them having some navigational trouble because all these boats are, are swinging in strange directions. There he is. They probably shouldn't have gone out that way. It's a little narrow. Hey, Danny. So, so this boat is supposed to be pointing upstream or <laughs> certainly not sideways like I am right now. This is a very... No, I'm. This is the funny part. I'm not loose. I'm. I'm attached. See these yellow. See these yellow mooring balls with the blue stripe. I'm attached to one of those. Well, <laughs> you're welcome to sailboat from your bed. I think you'll probably have a better sleep than I'm going to. I'm a little worried about what's going to happen <laughs> during the night. So the tide's running out. It's going to change direction. Then it won't be crazy like this. But then it's going to change direction again. And oh my goodness! I think at about three in the morning. I don't know what's going to happen. See this boat behind me, how it, it's, it's swimming around. Look, its, it's rope is loose, and now it's sideways to the current. And then it pulls up short, and then I'm pulling up short. Okay, so the other excitement here is the helicopters coming back, I think, to finish spraying for mosquitoes. You might be able to see that in the distance. It's pretty close. There's a marsh on the other side there. 1 a.m. Well, I hope you don't get seasick watching me killing time. This is just a... For me, this... I don't like being in this spot. I wasn't planning on going zigzaggy all evening. So, you know, I don't feel like having... I don't feel like having dinner now. I think dinner's going to be some graham crackers. You're going to get a sunset in about an hour. And I hear some, some noises on shore. I'm, I'm only like a hundred yards from shore. With these long days, people work crazy hours here. Yeah, if, if I actually was going along in my boat, I wouldn't be going in this, this crazy, crazy pattern. I'd like to be going straight. And I don't even think dragging a bucket off the stern would help. 1 a.m. 2 in Spain. Okay, well, have a good sleep. I think you're going to sleep better than I'm going to tonight. So whoever just joined, tip. Hi, tip. Tipo. Tipu. I'm on my sailboat, and there's this crazy, crazy current. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to sleep tonight, because, you know, look, look at how things are going. Hey, SSS, SSSB money, SSB money. This, this boat's attached to one of those yellow mooring balls, and, and things are just crazy right now. Well, I hope I sleep well, too. Thank you. 
Hey, Homer. Good to see you, Homer. It's always nice to see you pop in. So, Homer, what's happening here is, is the tide's running out, and I'm tied up to one of these yellow mooring balls, which normally you would just be facing one direction, but there's this really wild current here, which is sending, sending us every which way over the course of about 20 or 30 seconds. There's this huge oscillation. And I'm not too happy about it because I have to sleep here tonight. This is the first time I've been on a mooring ball. I usually been, I usually, been, yeah, it's moving fast too. We had, a, have you noticed this? There was a new moon a few days ago, and so these uh, these tides are very extreme, which means there's a lot more water running in and out. I think uh, yesterday the tide was minus 1.6 feet, and around here the most extreme tide is I think minus 2.2. So, so minus 1.6 is pretty extreme, which also means it's super high. It's a 1.6 extra, extra high, but you don't kind of notice that much. You only notice when, when it's ripping out like it is now. So all, all these boats on the, in the distance on the left, they're, they're behaving themselves. I'm just in a weird spot because it's so narrow here. Yeah, this, I, I had this thing, can you see that? I have this thing on a mount, so I really can't, I could disconnect it and, and pull it out. But upstream there's a constriction, which sort of sort of makes the water do weird stuff. Yeah, this Riva, hi Riva, this this is insane. <laughs> Homer, I, I have so I'm pretty I pre have a pretty good stomach, but but I have my doubts too. Riva, about 30 minutes ago this was even worse. Things things are settling down, the the tide's getting lower, and so the current's not running quite as as crazily but I'm still sort of wobbling back and forth. I'm tied onto one of these yellow mooring balls, just like that boat in the, uh, in the image. And it, it's doing some weird stuff, but not too much. Homer, you can't be getting sick in your, in your easy chair. That's not right. Here we go, here's a, here's a little bit of a spin. You know, you see people doing scopes, they paid $10 to ride the roller coaster. Well, heck, you can do this for free, and you can go for hours. Look, here we go. Here's a big oscillation. Woohoo! Yeah, this is beautiful here. Millionaire Moms Club, that's a good name. Viva, Massachusetts is, is beautiful. Symbio6, I thought you were going to sleep. <laughs> Hello from Las Vegas. This is the Merrimack River. I'm almost in... You got sick on a blow-up raft in a swimming pool. Homer, Homer, you better move to Las Vegas with that other viewer. Yeah, hi from London. Reva, do you ever get out on a, on a, a skull or a punt? Yeah, but you're, you're 102 degrees in Las Vegas. Is that dry air or very humid air? I don't think I'd want to be out when it's very, yeah, dry air. So I don't think I'd want to have 102 and, and a lot of humidity. That's, that's awful. Yeah, this is real pretty here. So aside from going back and forth for free for a couple hours, <laughs> it's a nice view, which is which is one reason why I thought to uh, raining and yeah, raining and cold. Oh, Hawaii. Oh, so you're you would like the heat. Yeah, it's it's pretty here. This is a nice spot. A lot of Massachusetts is is countryside. This is. This is in the uh, eastern, northeastern corner of Massachusetts. Yeah, I've seen the, uh, those lakes in Switzerland. You have some big ones there. There's a, this is a pretty big river that drains a lot of New Hampshire. And, yeah, okay, broadcast in the background is when you hear the radio. So this is a pretty big river that drains a, a portion of New Hampshire. I'm in Massachusetts. And we're having big tides because the moon was, was new the other day. And there's still like kind of the remains of, of melt, you know, stuff running downstream. I'm not going to answer Donald Trump supporters. Everyone has to make up their own mind. Look at this pivot. Here we go. I'm, you know, this, I'm sideways to the current. And then I'm going to pivot back. And like I'm, I'm turning through like 100 degrees. This is crazy. I'm supposed to sleep in this. It's going to calm down. No, I haven't, I haven't do, I don't do any fishing. I was at work this morning, and hi from Russia. I was at work this morning, and then I came in 
at noontime and, and came down here and put my car in the garage. Where is that? This is northeastern Massachusetts on the Merrimack River. Yeah, look at the view. That's right. Forget about politics. You can do politics all the time. Just look at this, this, this crazy view. So I ran some errands, came, came back, put my car in the garage. And, uh, and then I needed a ride out. And the guys that owned this boatyard were like completely busy, running around like crazy. So I just sat inside. They closed at 5. They locked me in. Igor, I'm, I'm sitting on my boat. And, and this is just a crazy view. Yeah, there's, there's some, some unsettled weather in the sky here. It's supposed to, uh, it might storm later. You can see those, those puffy clouds are. Yeah, Igor, this, this boat, you see the, uh, those yellow mooring balls? I'm attached to one of those yellow mooring balls. But the current here is really crazy. And, and like, here we go. I'm going back and forth for free. No, there's no sharks or dolphins. I'm in, right now I'm in fresh water. There's going to be, when the tide starts to come in, there'll be some salt water, but the sharks and the dolphins don't, uh, they don't come up here. So I'm just just going back and forth, back. Gators, you're going to find alligators in uh, Florida and farther south. Uh, shrimps, the shrimps, the water's too cold for shrimp. And what was the question about, no, alligators, shrimps, what was the other question? No, no, this isn't a riptide, this is just a bizarre eddy. Because the river's so, just in front of me, the river is really small, it's narrow. And so the current is the water, this city is in Newburyport. It's in the northeast corner of, uh, of Massachusetts. We don't have any crabs here, but we do have some lobsters out in the ocean. Oh yeah, the balls are anchored. So you have the float, the yellow ball, and then you have chain going down. Yeah, the water's draining out right now, and you have the chain going down to a granite block, or maybe a cement block. And they're pretty strong, they're pretty heavy, because you can see the, the current here is, uh, is strong. And, and it can be stronger, especially if there's been a lot of snow in the winter and there's a lot of uh, melting water coming downstream in like April. So, and they also have to design these things to take a hurricane. All right, the, uh, the yard owns a little boat that used to be used in like World War II. And you're gonna probably see him go by in a minute. He's coming out for some reason. This is the guy that brought me out. Here he comes, waving at us. He doesn't know we're on, on camera. So that's an old World War II lifeboat. And whoever took, whoever's taking snaps, you certainly timed it right. So that lifeboat, it has a very strong motor. And you can see it's all, I don't catch any fish, Allie. I want a sailboat, I just like to sail. I don't like to catch fish. So, uh, so that lifeboat was converted to be used as a tugboat and they tie it up alongside some boat and use it to drag it in and out. Because it has such a strong motor and it's pretty, pretty maneuverable. So you can hear it chugging away. I don't know what he's doing to that boat. He's tying on to it, getting on board. I think the guy, there was a little dinghy a few minutes ago and the guy came in and maybe he forgot something. I don't know. Well, they know they, this spot, I think right here is about 30 feet deep. This is a very deep spot because we're so narrow. And uh, Homer, the balls are spaced just right. because the tide's either, almost 98% almost of the time, the tide's either running in or the tide's running out. No, that motor is not at all environmental friendly. It's a big diesel engine going chug, chug, chug. So, so yeah, they, 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 figure, they, they know what they're doing. Hey, Sue, good to see you. Sue, this is, I'm in a crazy situation with the, the current in the Merrimack River is running, running out like the devil. Hey, Sue, did you notice how low the tide was in front of your house? We're having some extra low tides today, this week. Hi Dave, did you have your supper yet? I can't believe I have 35 visitors looking at this view. That's amazing. Average here, okay. 
Yeah, this is a beautiful spot. You know, you have these, these clouds in the distance. When I, I've been at the dock for a while, and I don't have the angle to... Uh, yeah, this is calm. There's almost no wind. Uh, is that... Let's see. Mille. Mille, are you in France? So, uh, my location is the northeast corner of Massachusetts in the U.S. And this is a pretty, pretty uh, busy river. There's a lot of boats here in the summer. Hello from Estonia. That's great. I don't know any, any, any of your language, so I'll have to speak in English. This is a small sailboat. It's only 29 feet. I'm hopefully buying a, a much bigger boat, and then I can have, have visitors. Bonjour de France. See, I knew, I knew you were in France with a name like Mille. I made a good guess there. Hello from Russia. Hi, Polly. So I'm on one of these, one of these yellow mooring balls. I'm attached to one of those. And, and the current here is just insane. And it's sending me back and forth and back and forth and all around. But at least I can stand outside and, and enjoy the view while I'm talking to you guys. Uh, there's no, I don't see any Boston, I'm not in a Boston whaler, I'm in a sailboat. There's no Boston whaler in, in view. But during the summer, this place is insane with boat traffic, especially in this narrow place. They, they don't know exactly where the, where the middle is. Yeah, you live in France. Yeah, it's a very pretty view here. Yeah, there's a bunch of French people here. Oh, you have a Boston whaler for fishing. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people from all, all around the world. That's what makes Periscope amazing. Yeah, I am by Stripers Inn. It's uh, just downstream from here. No, I, I, I could probably turn on in my Boston accent. Bonjour. <laughs> Sue, you're practicing your French. French. I could say, you know, if you want to start your automobile, you need to have your khakis. And I can turn on my, my khakis. But I'm really much better with a main accent. And there's the, how many can sleep aboard? Well, now that's an interesting question. There are two can sleep aboard right now. If I cleaned all my stuff out, then I probably could take another one person. You've never been here. Jim, are, are you going to visit the U.S. sometime? Yes, yeah, Sue, this is, this is the biggest crowd I've ever had watching me. It's kind of funny. I never thought that, that this simple view would... Uh... Yeah, I have a little galley. I have two burner stove. I'm located uh, on the Merrimack River in Massachusetts. Uh, there are no geocaches on the water here, but right behind me there's one on a place you can see those trees behind me. Yeah, I do go to Plum Island. Hey, Angie. Good to see you again, Angie. Angie, I'm on, uh, I'm on a mooring ball for the night. And, and the current's running out like crazy. No, no, this is the funny thing. I'm not, yeah, I do go, yes, on another planet, I do go to Plum Island. Um, whoever asked if I'm under power, you see that, that sailboat with the yellow ball? I'm, I'm on my boat, also attached to a yellow ball, and, and going nowhere. Oh, okay. Sorry, Angie, you had trouble. And Angie, I'm sorry you had a, a mishap with your, your water heater. That sounded pretty grim. Don't be scared about trying sailboats. Oh, you got three new caches, cool. Yeah, so, so, so my boat's tied to a mooring and, and I'm getting a free ride back and forth. You know, some, some people spend money for roller coasters, who needs that? Now look at that boat behind me, its rope has gone slack. Uh, yeah, there probably is good fishing, but you'd have to time it right. Right now the water's racing out, it's all fresh. And I have no idea what, what makes good fishing. Do I go to classes to learn? Do you mean to learn how to operate a boat? No, I learned on my... I actually did have a teacher, but I was a, a child then. So I had a teacher for a couple years. And I took a class. There goes that thing that's going past. That's an excursion boat. I, I boat just for fun, spacemate. This is a sailboat, so I just go sailing. 
All right, now how do you get to the dock? Well, if you've been watching long enough, you saw that yellow old lifeboat thing go by, and, and that's what brought me out, and they have to come out in the morning, and he's gonna pick me up again. Yeah, so, so it's nice if everybody speaks English. Sue, I'm gonna sleep here. I'm sleeping here tonight. This is my home. Yeah, I, uh, um, I think I ate all my snacks. I haven't been to the grocery store to get, get more stuff. <laughs> yeah, boat Uber. Normally I don't keep my boat this far upstream, but the logistics of what I've been doing for the last few weeks means I kept it here for safety. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Spacemate, come and, come and get on a boat. Spacemate, where do you live? Are you near the water? Let's, let's start at the beginning. Are you near the water? Yeah, this is a gorgeous view. About four weeks ago, you wouldn't have seen any boats in the water. It was too cold. Ha, <laughs> do I have AC? You should ask if I have electricity first. Yeah, Massachusetts. This boat is 29 feet long. So that would make it, uh, uh, let me guess, let me guess, eight times three, nine times three, this is about nine meters. Sail to Gibraltar. You know, I might, I, I might someday. And Angie, Angie, do you want to sail to Gibraltar? The water is, I'd have to turn my depth sounder on, but I'm guessing the, no, no generator. All I have is a, you want to sail to Gibraltar? Okay, Angie, let me know what year we're going and, and we'll plan ahead. Yeah, my boat is, is full of books. Uh, so whoever asked about how deep it is, I'm guessing it's 20 or 30 feet deep because this is a very narrow spot and the water races through here real fast and, and sweeps all the sand and, and mud away. Oh, here we go again. I'm sideways to the current. Oh, spacemate, where, where do you live? You up in the north end of, of, of Canada. Here we go, look at this, this big swing. I was sideways to the tide. Oh, in Russia. Yeah, you're, you're too far north. How far have I sailed? I, I sail about, oh, I don't know. I sail up and down the east coast of the United States. And I spend the winter in Florida, and sometimes I sail up to, to Canada. New Brunswick, in the Bay of Fundy. So I go back and forth. Okay, that little yellow. Uh, not exactly, I have a job. I just finished a job today, and I'm starting another job at the same place on a little island in about three weeks. And I might have a job on Friday. There's a Boston water taxi they just fixed up and it needs to go back to Boston. How long does it take to sail to Europe? I'm going to make a guess it takes somewhere around five weeks. I don't know how long it takes to... I haven't, haven't, haven't asked. I'm going to guess it takes four or five weeks. Of course it depends on the weather. No, I'm not going fishing. I don't go fishing. I wouldn't know what to do if I caught a fish. I'd, I'd have to get rid of them somehow. Yeah, if you want lobster, you're in the right place. Hey, millionaire mom. Nice to see you again. Yeah, what's up with this current is it's insane. The, uh, the tide's running out. It's almost low tide, but it's still running out pretty fast. And I'm in a narrow spot. Oh, cool. I like to do, do scopes, Millionaire Mom, from, from like different places, usually on the water or on a little island. So you, you're going to see different things. Yeah, I sail alone to Florida. And, and you'll see Glimmer Glass Sue is in here, and I stop in front of their house and often get invited to dinner. And it's very nice to, to see, see them all. Yep, there's Sue. She's my buddy. Sometimes I'm stuck, they're in New Jersey, and sometimes I'm stuck there. And I wish I could be stuck in front of their house instead of some other place where I'm like stuck, like unable to get on, on land. Yeah, Sue takes me around. Oh, I've certainly been in storms. Hopefully, hopefully when I'm in the storm, I don't, see this is the problem. I can't get out of this current. This is the river, and this is what it is. I'm, I'm kind of stuck here for tonight. So that little, there's a little yellow boat that, that goes around. It's going to pick me up. Oh, cool. Um, Cher McKee. 
Why can you get out? Maybe why can't I get out, do you mean? So my boat used to be at the dock. It was moved to make space for somebody else because they thought I was coming back Friday night. Well, I came back Tuesday and they weren't expecting me. So it's a busy time of the year and they're putting a lot of boats in the water. Oh, that's wonderful. I made your day. Okay, you have a good sleep. So, so my boat normally is at the dock and they didn't expect me to come back today. So I'm on this mooring ball. Okay, see you later. Yeah, it's pretty dry in Pakistan. I, um, I don't sail offshore to Florida. Well, that's kind of a lie. The, the farthest offshore I am is from, from like 15, no, 20 miles off, off of Boston. And I can put on my accent and say Boston and khakis and Harvard Yad. But I have a better main accent, actually. So, so most of the trip, once you get down to the end of New Jersey, is, is in more sheltered waters. You don't, you don't see, you're not in the ocean, really. So it's a, it's a kind of a boring trip of a lot of motoring. You can jump offshore if you have... Yeah, I've been in storms. I'm getting better every year about not being in storms. Hey, JJ. I'm, I'm 25, 30 miles from Boston. JJ, do you ever take a Boston water taxi? Yeah, I go through Atlantic City. I don't do the coast of New Jersey. Hey, Kayvon. Good to see you. I can't believe I have 30, 38 people just looking at this, this scenic. Yeah, this is, I, I just didn't expect to be on my boat in this strange current. And, and it's swimming, swimming me around about 90 degrees. So I have been in some storms. They, they, the forecast was for one thing and, and it turned out to be another thing. And then, oh my goodness, now what do I do? And you just have to keep proceeding on. So, Poppy, Kayvon, you can see on the right hand side, I have a, it's a snake clamp. And so it's not exactly a tripod, it's, it's kind of a, a heavy metal, metal support. So I like to have steady, steady video. And, and because I'm not holding the camera, you can just see how the, the current is making this boat swim around in crazy, crazy fashion. I'm on one of these yellow mooring balls. So I should be pointing in one direction, and I just got dropped out here. Yeah, this, this clamp is wonderful. So, so look at this boat behind me. It's sideways to the tide. Yeah, hi, Phyllis. Yeah, well, if you're in a storm, the idea is to get out of the storm, and sometimes running with the, the motor. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. My motor's shut off. I'm, I'm, I'm tied up to one of these yellow mooring balls, and the current is so crazy here that it's just making the boat go one way and the other. And you can see that boat behind me. It, it's doing the same thing. Yeah, here we... <laughs> so people that have been watching for, for 15 or 20 minutes, yeah, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't timed it because I'm just chatting away and, and going back and forth, back and forth. Oh, so JJ, I, there's a... This boatyard I'm at has just fixed... They fixed a, a Boston water taxi, and they have to get it back to Boston. Yeah, again and again. <laughs> Homer, how's your stomach? Oh, no, there's no tropical storm here. This is this is just normal summer, early summer weather. Um, I do have a huge battery backup pack, which I haven't connected, because the phone was pretty much charged when I started. I haven't checked the, uh, let's see. I'm down to 64%, so I'm, I'm still good. Yeah, so hang good good Homer hanging in in there. So there's a there's a Boston water tax that they just fixed and it has to get back back to Boston and and the other day I was joking that I would drive it back and now that I'm back from work early I might really drive it back and that would be a really cool trip. You know, I'd I'd shoot across 12 miles to uh, Cape Ann and go through the the Anasquam River. No, we're not I wouldn't tow it back. I'd drive it back. Boston water taxi is a pretty strong boat. It's not very big, but I'd pick a nice day. Homer, you've seen, um, you've seen, um, oh shoot, Susie Berlin. She's showing you the Boston water taxi, and the one here is about that size. It's one of the small ones. That, that water taxi company owns 52 boats, and one of the biggest is probably something that will go, go 50 or 60 miles and take you across uh, 
all the way to Provincetown, the tip of Cape Cod. Yeah, I do have navigation equipment. I have a whole bunch of GPSs and a, two compasses and a radar, which I need to fix, and a radio. So, so if it's not foggy, I'm all set because the radar is out of, out of commission. But I think it might just be some, some electrical connection that needs to be fixed. All right, who's, who's timing it? Who, someone has to say it. Say, here we go again. Well, Millionaire Mom, take, take a screenshot, or you can watch the replay. Yeah, this is an automatic panning device. <laughs> yeah, for free. So if you want a screenshot and you've missed it, just... No, I don't have a television. Yeah, thank you, JJ Mary. Here we go again, except this time you get, you get some live action. <laughs> this is really hilarious. That, that this, I never would have guessed this would be a, a popular scope. Yeah, so this, this little, little motorboat had, had gone out a few minutes ago, and it's coming back. And they have to be careful, because if you, uh, yeah, you can see the current. And, and I'll tell you, about an hour, an hour ago, it was even worse. So this little motorboat has to be really careful, because all of us on these mooring balls are going every which way. And, and they can't quite anticipate what's going to happen next. So I gave him, gave him the thumbs up. You can see the sun setting. Hey, Julie! I've been scoping for a long time. Oh, he almost, he's, oh my goodness, that boat almost hit me. Uh, no, it's not always like this. What's going to happen is the tide's going to get low and then it won't uh, be running out anymore. And then it's going to start to come in. And when it comes in, it's, it's, it's kind of placid. But then it's after it's, <laughs> he has like a pinball machine. But eventually the tide will be high and then it's going to start to run out again. And then this crazy thing will, is going to happen. And so like at two or three or four in the morning, I'm going to wake up going back and forth. And I'm going to hear the water gurgling. And I really hope it's not windy because if it's windy, then this would be like being in a washing machine. And I will not be amused. Yep, here we go again. JJ, you missed your cue. So I'm not sure what tonight brings. I think the wind's picking up. To, yep, there you go. There you go, JJ Mary. You always missed your cue. No, I live on this boat. And when I'm not living on the boat, I'm working on a little island. And when you work on this island, then you also sleep there. And that's where I've been for the last three, three and a half weeks. My car, Sue, my car's in the garage. It's being, the air conditioner wasn't working. So, so I have to sleep on this boat. I was sitting in the office, my car's in the garage, my boat's in a mooring. I'm sitting in the office, they closed at 5, they locked me in, and finally at 6.30, I got a, got a ride out here. Where are we? This is the Merrimack River in the northeast corner of Massachusetts. I'm pretty near the ocean, I'm probably four miles from the ocean. So I had no car, I had no way to get to my boat. Yeah, this is making me a little dizzy too. Uh, I would like to show you more of the boat, but I have this camera on a clamp. I'm just going to leave it here for now. No, if you went into the water here, do you see how fast the water's running here? Hi from LA. If you went into the water here to swim, you could swim, but you would never ever end up where you started. You'd probably be carried down. See all these boats behind me? You, you'd, be, you'd float down immediately into some boat, hit your head, and no, I don't have a shower. You'd hit your head, be conked out, be run over, and this is just not a place to, to be swimming because the, you, you, you might end up at sea. The tide's running out right now. All right, that little yellow boat went by and left some waves. Um, so the tide's running out and you'd be carried out to sea, or, yeah, the current would pull you under, or the tide would be running in, which isn't quite as bad, but it's still bad, and you'd, you'd end up upstream somewhere. No, I haven't caught lobsters. I've, I rode a rowboat once. The water temperature is about 55. No, there's no seals or dolphins right here. The, uh, this water's too fresh. Yeah, I do have some food. I don't have too much food because I haven't been shopping for a while. I've been working on an island. So I haven't, haven't been shopping for food. Um, so the, no, this is a, a fiberglass boat. The seals and dolphins are, are out in the ocean. This water's too fresh. And in the spring, sometimes you see them hauled up, the seals hauled up on rocks. No, this is, this is not brackish right now. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> hey, Jonathan JK. 
Good to see you, Jonathan. I never thought this scope would be insanely popular, but it's turned into one. I'm, see, so Jonathan, I'm on one of these yellow, yeah, Kayvon, I don't know. Kayvon was here. I'm on one of these yellow mooring balls and, and the tide's running out and it was even worse earlier, but I'm in, in a narrow section of the Merrimack River. The Merrimack River is in the northeast corner of Massachusetts. And, and I got dropped off with some difficulty. And, and then I realized, look at what's, look at what's happening. So, so I, had to, uh, I had to put my camera on this mount. My, mo my mast is full. I think I can clear, I can clear a 41 foot bridge. I have, I have 39 people watching this. In Manchester, New Hampshire, okay. K yeah, Kayvon was here. I have no idea how Kayvon came into my, my little scope, but he probably was looking through a list and saw this, you know, how often do you see a scope with this view? This view is very unique. You see so many scopes with people with the, the camera facing them. I'm showing a very different view. And he probably was looking through things and saw this very different view and was intrigued because how often do you see this on a scope? I was at the dock for three weeks and I was kind of hoping to mount the camera somehow, but I never really could figure out how to get a better, you know, to show this wide angle stuff. And, and battery dying. Okay, Sue, see you later. So by accident, I came home from, from work early here in the week. I was supposed to come home Friday night and I came, came back today, Tuesday afternoon and they didn't expect me to hear, so they put my boat out here to make space for, uh, for other boats. This is a very busy time of the year for this boat yard because spring is over, summer is starting. Angie, this is not a violent motion. I'm not really bobbing up and down. I'm just sort of going back and forth. This is, this is, this is nothing. Hey, Sherry. Can I share? Share Mickey, Mickey Mouse. That's a good name. I'm on, uh, I'm on LTE. The Wi-Fi here is, is not quite enough. Yeah, this is calm. So, no, Angie, Angie, you think you would, but you get, this is nothing. This is, this is, this is like Lake Placid. When I was coming up the, oh, speedboat, that's nice. When I was coming up the coast of New Jersey, I went out twice trying to leave and I didn't, didn't make it. I went out and turned around and the seas were seven feet. And, and I didn't think anything of it. I mean, I was just going up and down, but I wasn't going very fast, so, so there was no point in, in trying. Tanzer 26, does your sailboat even lift? I'm not sure, Andrew, I'm not sure what does even lift mean. So, yeah, Angie, I was in seven foot seas, but the spacing was such that it wasn't violent. Yeah, I do have a motor. Now, you would think the motor's on. Okay, here we go again. JJ, where are you? Don't miss your cue. <laughs> you know what? You, you almost would be able to water ski in this. This this is a crazy current. Those hearts are showing appreciation. If you tap the screen, Marilyn, if you tap the screen, that means people are liking what they're looking at. Yeah. So uh, Marilyn, I think you're you're probably new. You found a good scope. I, I hate to be uh, <laughs> to be bragging, but but I'm kind of a different scoper. What time is it? Look at the look at the map. I say 7:51 is the time here. My boat is a Bristol 29. It's a very old sailboat built in 1969, and I've used it extremely up and down the coast of North America, from Florida to Canada. Jonathan, um, I think we can buy a machine that will help you tap the screen because I know you're handicapped. And I know you don't have any hands or fingers. You could, yeah, thank you, Mary. <laughs> Mary, you're my buddy. Uh, Jonathan, you can try using your nose to tap the screen because I know you're handicapped. Well, that's great that you sail, sailed in Hawaii. You can't see hearts. Yeah, tap the screen. I don't know where the Bay of Quinte is. That doesn't ring a bell. Cassandra here. Hi, Cassandra. Yeah, we, we have a few people that know each other. Yeah, tap the X and that will end, the, <laughs> end your view. So, so, Jonathan, I hope you figured out how to tap the screen. I know you're new. No, there, there, isn't, there aren't any teak decks. This is uh, all fiberglass, except I it's an old boat. Yeah, I'm on the North Shore. Where are you on the North Shore? I'm in Newburyport. I have sailed to the Florida Keys. 
twice, but I don't go that far anymore. All right, Jonathan JK, congratulations on your first scope. I hope you figure things out. I'm glad you're not an egg. And I don't know how you managed to get like six million hearts on your first scope, Jonathan JK. I think you've gamed the system. Yeah, I have sailed out of the US. I've sailed to Canada numerous times. And thank you, Mary. <laughs> uh, so, so I've sailed to Nova Scotia twice, but the trouble with Nova Scotia is the fog's so thick and cold, it's miserable. I have been boarded by the Coast Guard. I was boarded this year. Yeah, I do have drinking water. Okay, so, so there's inflation. You, you've paid, how, hey, Jonathan JK, how much does it cost to buy hearts? So I do have drinking water. I'm not, I'm not anchored, I'm on one of these yellow mooring balls. So I'm tied up on a mooring. If I was anchored, I think this boat would be swimming even, even more crazily. But I, I shouldn't be facing in this direction. This, I'm like, you, we're looking downstream. <laughs> you shouldn't be, shouldn't be facing this way. This is insane. Yeah, here we go again. Free ride. Yeah, I have, I've had, had, I have had some experiences. Okay, thank you for coming in Maryland. I'm glad you found me. Yeah, poor Jonathan JK. He has more money than he knows what to do with. He buys hearts. He doesn't know how to tap the screen. He's probably been drinking beers. I bet, you know what? I bet he's been eating, um, eating some eggs and that probably has gone to his head. Yeah, you know, I'm going really fast. Yeah, all these mooring balls are owned by the same boatyard. All these yellow ones with the blue stripe. So if you want to spend less money for the summer, you can rent one of these for like a couple thousand dollars and you have to supply your own little dinghy. No, no birds. Yeah, so Jamie, you're, you're quite right. Once the, uh, the tide gets lower, then the current's gonna... Thank you, Mary. <laughs> oh, this is too hilarious. Once the tide gets a little bit lower, then this current's gonna slack off and, and things will, will be normal for... Well, it takes six hours for the tide to come in and there'll probably be an hour of, of the tide going out when it's not doing this crazy business. So, so in like eight or nine or 10 hours from now, it's gonna run out again in the middle of the night. Yeah, hold on, Mary. Mary, I need you here. You, you, can, you can operate the steering wheel and, and keep us straight. Yep. See, this is, this is the direction I should be facing. I didn't see any storms. We had no storms passing through where I was. There was a bit of a shower this morning where I was working offshore. Yeah, I could take passengers, but you know, I don't need to take passengers. I'll, I'll take people just for the fun of it. Yeah, there we go again, getting lined up. So, Bic, Bic Feds. You wanna be, well, come on. You see where I am on the map, hop on a plane, fly to Boston, or I should say Boston. So, what do I do? I was, I've was i been working on a tiny island off the coast of New Hampshire. And what I was doing just ended today. I'm gonna to have a little hiatus, and then I'm gonna go back in a few weeks and I'm going to be running a little boat. Yep, here we go again. There we go. Mary, you're hilarious. So I'm going to be running a little boat to pick people up on boats like this when they come to visit my little island. And I'll bring you into the dock. And then I'll hang around the dock. And when you're finished buying ice cream or a snack or having a hamburger, yeah, <laughs> then I'll take you back out to your boat. So basically, that little boat's called a launch. And I'll be the launch operator. Yep. You're a maestro. Can you sing? Can you play a guitar? You're a maestro. The last time I saw you, you were visiting Kennedy Space Center. And I, I got there finally about two months later. Yeah. Can you sing? Are you going to entertain us with uh, sitting on the dock of the bay? Okay, Homer. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> Mary, I think, <laughs> I think you're the funniest person here. Here we go. Who, did, did, Mary, did you, did you start saying that? Or was that somebody else? Who, who started this? This is crazy. This is, this is like a scope that's gotten out of control. <laughs> yeah, somebody, I've never had, you know, I'm just showing the view and to have, 
uh, to have 30 viewers consistently is really funny. Now, who's tooting? I don't know who's tooting. There's somebody on a dock probably testing their horn. Now, I'm really sideways to the tide. Yeah, Kayvon was here. I got recognized. Kayvon and I were having a chat. Uh, I think it is tuna season, but the trouble with tuna season is there's so few tunas that that you're going to spend a lot of money to go 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 after tunas and probably not get any. Sorry, you are my. So how many? I don't go fishing. So whoever is asking about tunas and fishing, I don't know anything. I can't answer any of those questions. To do what? Yeah, I was doing this last this last three weeks. I was doing what I love, and that's working on a tiny little island. You can see it in my replays. Yeah, I can't see who is beeping. There's there's another mariner in front of me, and I think someone is just pushing the uh, the button on their horn. I'm not quite retired. I'm still working a little bit. So I was working on this little island in the spring. Yeah, Jonathan J.K., I, I basically finished working a few days earlier than I expected to. So there's going to be a little hiatus, and then I'll go back to my little island. And you can see it in the profile. If you look at my profile, you'll see where I've been working. You can call up the website and see photos. My boat's 29 feet long, and after a few, few yeah, get a boat. Share, where do you live? What state are you in? So after a few weeks of hiatus, I'll go back to my little island and, and I'll be working again. I'm going to make a guess that this boat is nine, nine and a half meters. Cher, are you inland in California or are you on the water? I know it's very hard to have a boat in California because there's not much space and there's a lot of people. So, hello again. It's good to see you again, Riva. Inland Empire, okay. Yep, from London. <laughs> Mary. Mary, you're too cute. Yeah, you're a maestro. I know you, you travel around. The name of my boat, it's like in the Bible. Its name is Ascension. And, and when I go through bridges, sometimes the bridge operator says, what's the name of your boat and where are you from? And I'll have to repeat myself a few times because they aren't expecting to hear Ascension. A thousand dollars to Miami. Yeah, there's, there's money to be made running running people around. But, but that's somewhat that's a bit of a that's a little bit of a trouble troublesome thing too. You have to you have to work. Uh, right, what couple still traveling in their boat? Oh the bridge Euromeister, the um, the bridge operators write down the name of your boat and I think they probably write down the time. And that's in case uh, you're reported missing and the Coast Guard can then start calling various bridges and ask, have you seen such and such a boat? Yeah, I did scope the, uh, the when they launched that boat. So so it's kind of a safety thing, Euro Maestro, that, that I kind of worry about a little bit of privacy, but you know, if they're trying to find someone that's reported missing, they can sort of narrow it down by where they were, were found, seen last. Yeah, I, I, I've been to Miami a couple of times and it's a long trip. It is a long trip, especially in this little boat. A pop top. Well, that's nice. Anything that gets you out in the water is nice. Wine, please. Okay, now someone has the right idea. Wine, please. This is about the time of the night. It's after five o'clock. Yeah, I, I'm standing. I'm standing kind of on the steps of the inside of my, my boat. This this clamp is mounted to basically a, a hatch, a hatch thing. Yeah, you can wine if you want. It's starting to get dark. I'm sure my battery is about to run out. I can't share the inside. You see, you see, you see this thing on the right-hand side of the screen. That's my snake clamp, and, and so I have this camera. That's that's why I'm not hand-holding this. You're quite welcome. I like to show show different different pretty scenes. So this camera is on a snake clamp. I'm not going to pick it out. Uh, the inside is a complete mess. That's what's wrong with the inside. <laughs> Uh, right now the water's fresh. Yeah, there's uh, there's one body in here too. I'm in the northeast corner of Massachusetts on the Merrimack River. So because I've been working on this little island, I just come I just come back to here for sleeping for the weekend. And so everything's in in a very disordered condition. Because I yeah this view is spectacular. I think that's why Kayvon was here. Oh, you've been waiting months to see the, Jonathan. You're not going to see the inside of this wreck. Yeah, I sleep here. 
it's, it's getting dark. I'm going to have to shut down this scope in a little bit and uh, close up. The bugs have been biting me for a while. Well, my boat, my boat is a total disaster because I've, 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 because I live on this little island and work on this little island. I only want to carry so much in my bag. So I've taken everything out of my bag and thrown it all around. Yeah, I have a two-burner stove. No, the boat will not float away. It's on one of the, see these yellow mooring balls? It's, it's attached to one of these yellow, yellow mooring balls. It's just the crazy current where I am. They notice in the distance, all those other boats are doing fine. It's just this little spot has, has this, and this time of the day, yeah, here we go again. JJ, did you, uh, Mary, did you disappear? I think people are dropping off. Uh, they're pretty heavy. They're, they're, they, I'd measure the weight in No No Girlfriend. The, the mooring balls, the blocks are measured. Yeah, you could fish from here. The, the weight of these blocks is probably measured in, in tons. There's a, because you can see this current here is crazy and you have to allow for a storm and you don't want anything drifting around. So, so they overdo the weights of those mooring blocks. Yeah, these are very heavy mooring balls. And I think if we wanted to be naughty, we could talk about other kinds of balls, but yeah, I could switch mooring balls. But this is the one I was given. Yeah, it's very warm today. It's humid too. You can see those puffy clouds in the distance. That shows how humid it is. Well, I'm, on, I'm just on a temporary mooring. Yep, here we go again. I hope to get back to the dock tomorrow. But see, what they do is, you know, I really, I, you know, it's not worth the trouble. I'm only here for the night. We'll see what happens tomorrow, tomorrow night. If, and the other problem is tomorrow night, there's supposed to be a storm. Yeah, the balls are numbered. So what happens here is a lot of these boats have, have paid for the summer. Yeah, keep the ball you were given. Don't go swapping out somebody else. Yeah, there we go. I knew this, this scope would degenerate once we started talking about balls. Um, so yeah, they're numbered. Uh, is someone suggesting they want to help to me to keep my boat neat? They don't have boats you can rent, so the mooring balls you can rent, and you put your boat on it, and that's where your spot is for the summer. And then you have to supply a little, little dinghy to get out to it. And so you need a motor, because you can see how much the current's running. So there's a little place on shore at the dock where all the dinghies tie up. And it's really hilarious because there's never enough space at the dock for the dinghies. There's always a crowd. Well, if you're getting dingy from the current, you can jump in. It's fresh water right now. And you'll be washed off and washed away and your body will float up just spick and span. So there you go. Hi, hi again, Karen. Well, people know where I am. Someone, I think somebody just asked how I'm going to get to shore. So if you've been watching from the beginning, you would have seen, yes, yeah, deep here, it's about 20 or 30 feet. There was a yellow old World War II, um, I want to say like a lifeboat. And the owners of this marina used that lifeboat to, to drag all these sailboats around. And he brought me out and he's going to pick me up. Karen, you're not watching the replay. We're still here. We're still going back and forth. And I have JJ Mary saying, here we go again every time we go again. <laughs> That's really hilarious. Okay, thanks for hanging in there for so long, Symbio. Yeah, well, this is the Merrimack River. How far am I from land? Well, look. Look how far I am from land. I'm, I'm next to the land. No, I, I, if I tried to swim 30 feet, I'd end up drowned because the water would rush me. No, I, I'm not from Boston. I'm from north of Boston. I don't have any wine with me. Dust bat, why don't you sail? Are you too far away? Um, and I, I was giving a long answer to somebody. There we go, here we go again. I have about two weeks off, Karen. No, Marilyn, I'm, I'm tied up at a mooring ball, so I'm headed nowhere. I'm headed to, to bed eventually. Yeah, if you're scared of deep water, then you don't want to be out in the ocean. But being in the ocean is just a matter of timing, timing the weather. Oh, from Lynn, okay. I, and I guess uh, let's be happy. Are you are you still near Lynn, or or have you moved away? I don't have a TV. My boat's tw twenty nine feet long, and and yeah, I'll only go in the ocean if you're in a ship. Is there any tea in that water? No, the Boston Tea Party was a long time ago, and all that tea is now washed away. No, I don't have a cat either. Uh, this boat's really too small for a cat, and I've been gone basically for three weeks working on an island, 
and I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, all right, so fresh water. So the river from, the river's running downstream from New Hampshire, and it's, it's like 150 miles long. So all this water from, from New Hampshire is coming downstream, and it's fresh. Angie, I'm really hitting up those questions. 29, 0 to 9, just 29. 129 feet would be like a yacht. So all this fresh water is just running downstream from inland, and it goes out to sea, and then eventually the tide changes, and the current stops, and it starts to run in, and we'll get some salt water here because there's a lot of fresh, but in August... Oh, you're still there, JK. Okay. So, so right now we have all this fresh water running out. There we go again. Yeah, you can... So you missed... Uh, earlier we had a little boat go out with two lobster traps. I think you're allowed... For like a private person, you can get a two-trap license or a three-trap license and put them out. Yeah, I'm pretty good with questions because you know I know the answers. I don't have to make up some answers. So if you have a two-trap license, you can put them out. But the problem is you have to put your your lobster traps where you're not going to annoy somebody. I I don't know what if I'm not, not sure if I'm even having any dinner. I might have some crackers. I haven't had my dinner yet. I had a very late lunch. And it was very big, a very big lunch, so I'm not very hungry. So whoever was asking about the tides, so you're going to get the ocean coming in, and we'll get some salt water up here, and in August, after there's been like no rain for two months, then you get a lot more salt water. Everybody's at home. I'm, I'm the only person here. Well, I'm just answering questions. I'm not really rambling. You learn never to get drunk. Yeah, don't go in the cabin. That's, yeah, I do have a motor. Karen, I'll explain that to you later. It's too long of a story. Yeah, if you, if you get it all queasy, don't go into the cabin because then you will get even sicker. Uh, Mojo, is your ex-wife pretty? Yeah, stare at the shoreline. If you, you start to get queasy, it's, there's, there's different cures for... Uh, well, I'll be sailing in the ocean in probably about a week. I'm going to take this boat out to my little island out at sea. We have all night. Yeah, but no, I'm not married. My boat is 20... <laughs> I need to make an FAQ. I'm not married. My boat is 29 feet long. It's 20 or 30 feet deep here. This is the Merrimack River. I'm not fishing. I don't know how to fish. There's lobsters nearby. The island, look at my profile. It's called Star Island. And I'm from New England, so I'm talking fast. And I'll say it again. Star, with my Boston accent. Star Island. I'm engaged. I'm engaged to two people. Jonathan has to plan our wedding. Angie, I already showed you where we're getting married. And, and Karen's here too, so you two will have to work it out about who I'm marrying. Yeah, there's, there's a married... No, a polygamist. Thank you, Angie. You're very, very astute. Uh, I'm glad you said stripers and not strippers. There's neither one. There are neither stripers nor strippers here right now. And I wouldn't know what to do with... Well, let's not go down that road. Uh, there are a lot of stripers. Yes, here we go again. There are a lot of striper f people that go fishing, but I have no idea when the, the striper season is. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm cheating on you. Whoever, all right, so it's first come, first serve. Someone has to show up and save me from my... Someone has to show up and, and whoever's going to clean my boat. Well, wait till you see the next boat I'm getting. That's, that's a work in progress. I have a woman in every port. It sounds like I do, but I don't. So, so this boat is 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 <laughs> cheating with the stripers. Do not, all right, everybody, do not get caught cheating with stripers because you'll be in very hot water. Okay, see you later, Jonathan. It's, I'm glad you 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 popped in on this bizarre bizarre scope as the sun has probably set by now, and my battery's about to to give out. So, so what's happening here is this swirling current sending me, sending me left and right. <laughs> it seems to be amusing everybody, and maybe just the view. I, oh, I wish I had a date with a mermaid. I can only, that's right, one can only hope. A date with a mermaid. Now the question is, can the mermaid speak English? So, the swirling is, is, is a bit less extreme. Yeah, I can charge my phone. I can I can plug it in. I have a, um, a, a an inverter that changes 12 volt battery power to the the thing that charges. 
So so I'm I'm good. No no throwing anything over. You guys have been really nice keeping me company for, for it seems like an hour. I never really planned to have <laughs> to have quite such an audience. This is hilarious. Well, thank you. I like to show people different views. You see so many scopes and, and the scope is pointed at somebody's face and they're just talking at you. And I think the whole point of scopes is to show, to show something. Yeah, Angie, I never have an audience this long. Hi, Katie. <whistles> oh, there's Susie Berlin's gone live. You can go for, if anyone that's near Newburyport, you can go for a ride. Just show up, let me know you're coming. Angie, why can't I talk about you? You're really cute. Oh my goodness, did I say that? Angie's gonna go for a ride. Yeah, I do live on a boat. I'm on a sailboat. It's only 29 feet long. I'm tied up to one of those yellow, <coughs> excuse me, tied up to one of those yellow mooring balls. And, and finally the current's starting to slack off a little bit. So the, uh, oh, did you see that fish jump? Did you all see that fish jump? That was a big one. So whoever's been asking about fishing, you just got your answer. Yeah, I'm, I live on this boat probably 11 months out of 12 or 10 and a half. Yeah, this mooring ball is attached to a chain and the chain goes down to a heavy, heavy block on the bottom. Okay, JJ, Mary, here's your cue. Here we go again. So some people have asked about fish and I just saw one jump. And the other day something jumped and it's hit, the fish was so big it hit its head and made a noise as it hit the dock and, and fell back in the water. This city is in Newburyport, Massachusetts. It's in the northeast corner of the state, right near the border of New Hampshire. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't know what to do if I caught a fish. You'd have, someone would have to help me. Oh, thanks. I, 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 I'm glad I, yeah, I do live here alone. I've been working on a tiny little island. No, I don't fish. I've been working on a tiny island for the last three weeks. So I really wasn't alone there. We had a population of somewhere between 30 and 50. Uh, if, I, if I had, that's a good, a good question, but if, if I had a ball in both directions and there's a storm, then it would be pushing, pushing me on the side. And it's better to swim, swing around with the t changing tides. Now in places that don't have a lot of current, they do just that. And they have a front ball and a back ball and they line everybody up like a sardine and you can fit a lot more boats in that way. But <clears throat> the current here is so crazy that it's better if you can swing around. Even though you sort of <clears throat> end up going, going in bizarre directions sometimes. I've never been on a mooring ball that, that has had this strange, strange current. The ones in the distance, yeah, the current here is crazy. The, the, boats, the boats on the other side of the river, the ones in the distance there, they're just sitting there pretty. They're not going back and forth. Like, why couldn't you put me over there? Oh well, I'm okay. I'm not really complaining. I've been boating for, for a long time. So how do I get to land? I don't have a little dinghy with me. It's tied up on shore. So the guy that owns the boat yard is gonna come and get me in the morning. That boat behind me, they have to come to it first and get some parts off of it or something off of it. And so they'll then come and get me at some point. So my, my car is in the garage, I'm kind of stuck here. Well, I hope I'm not rocked. I hope it's calm. Tomorrow the wind's supposed to pick up, so, so I'm not gonna be so happy if I'm out here again. What kind of boat have you driven, Angie? Yes, I could sail away if I wanted to. Now the trouble is, it's um, probably a mile to the bridge, and the bridge would have to open. And if I wait too long, then you know at 10 p.m. I think the guy goes off duty. So then I'd be trapped. Couldn't get out of this section of the river. I can't go upstream very far because there's a bridge up there too. Mast, I can clear a bridge that's 41 feet. So the mast is probably 40 feet. Oh, 25 years ago, that's a long time. Angie, you were just a kid. I can't show you my equipment, it's, uh, it's all put away. And at this point, the bugs, the winds, what little wind there was has, has quit and the bugs are really eating me up. So I'm going to end this scope and, oh, you're 21. Angie, that wasn't, that wasn't too long ago. You're only 35 now. We know your secret. 
So I'm going to end this scope, and if, I'm ha if I happen to be out here again tomorrow, then, then I'll do another one. So everyone that watched and, and kept me amused, thanks very much. Hey Cheryl, you just missed me. I'm, I'm just ending the scope. I'm giving my goodbyes. So you can watch on the re replay. And everyone that kept me company, I really... Well, if you have more questions, you'll have to get me another time. Follow me. I'll be on again. So everyone, good night. Have a good sleep. And take care. So see you all later.